Hello everyone, welcome back to Technology Moments and today another video related to VPNs and secure remote connections. We're going to use this, the ER605 of TP-Link uh, that works also with Omata controllers and we're going to be using OpenVPN as a secure connection method. We've already seen in the past how to create L2TP servers creating IPsec tunnels but we've already seen how Microsoft with its updates has made these connections an uncertainty and we already saw that Last January 2022, when thousands of people were affected in their remote jobs by not being able to establish remote secure connections. There are many scenarios that push us to work not only remotely, but also to do so in a secure way. The best of these methods is to establish tunnels that allow us to use the internet, which is a public network by nature and through which our traffic can be vulnerable to connect to our business networks or to our homes without fearing that our communications and transmitted information are being compromised. Not only transmitting or downloading files is a common use for VPNs, but probably one of the most used services is the remote desktop connection, which led to many attacks being aimed at exploiting some deficiencies in this protocol. Today is not only used to work remotely at our companies, but many people use it to secure connections to accounting and billing software for points of sale, making it much more critical in terms of security. So straight to the point, we're gonna configure the OpenVPN server on our ER605 Enterprise router. And for this today, we're gonna do it through the graphical user interface directly from the router and not through the Omata controller. Let's remember that one of the advantages of this great router is that it can have several internet connections or ISPs, providing us with redundancy and high availability of such precious service. We're first gonna see something that we previously have configured and then we're gonna create it from scratch. We go to the VPN tab and we choose OpenVPN. As we can see here, we already have two servers created, one on port 1194 and the other one on port 1195, one of which has access to the external network like this one and the other one does not. For example, in this case, we see that the server connection created has a local network 2.1 of mask 255.0 and allocates address in the range 5.0. We cancel here and we're gonna take a look at this other one. If we do not have much experience in this regard, we can rely on applications or programs that can help us design the network and its size and thus avoiding inconveniences later when we generate IP conflicts. In this case, for this other particular profile, since we don't need it, we're gonna eliminate it and we're gonna create one for practical purposes of this small workshop that we're doing right now. First, we're gonna verify what our local network is and what our network mask is to avoid that our clients that connect remotely will have an IP conflict. Then, we can go to create our new VPN server. We give it a name, this is purely informative, and we leave the default values for the port. In the event, then we already have another server running, like in this particular case, for example, we must specify a different port than the ones being used. Finally, we specify which is the local network, that is, the network that is currently working. It is very important that our gateway is the one with which this network begins, otherwise it will not allow us to access the internet when connected. We choose which of the internet providers is going to be the one that receives the incoming connections. In this case, it is going to be the only one, which is called a WAN. And finally, we're going to create a pool of addresses for the clients that are going to connect remotely. And in this way, the routing for particular network segments will be done by the router. If we want the remote clients not to have an internet connection, a trick would be to choose the 2.0 address here. But since we need the remote clients to have internet access, we leave it at 2.1. We accept, save, and our server will have been created. The first time that we create an OpenVPN server, it'll take a couple minutes to export the configuration file with the certificate for the remote encryption. In this case, it'll be practically instantaneously created as we have exported certificates previously from this router. This file that has just been created has the information not only for the client and the server certificates or the keys, but also the local and remote network. And it is through which the client locates the server, identifies itself, and establishes the encrypted communication. It is important that we identify this file very well and give it the treatment and importance it deserves, because having this file actually gives remote direct access to your network, so it'll be like literally having the keys to access. Now we just have to go to our VPN client and install one of the two options that we currently have. We can install OpenVPN Community Client or we can install 
OpenVPN Connect. The only difference between these two is basically that one is developed and supported by the community and the other one is from a company and is proprietary software. In this case, we're going to use OpenVPN Connect for which we download and install the client from the openvpn.net page. Also, if you choose, they are available from your corresponding app store if you're going to use it to connect from your mobile devices. Once we install it, it'll ask us to import the file that contains the VPN configuration and certificates that we just created. Give a friendly name to your connection and then click connect. We'll be connected to our remote network and we'll have access to practically all the resources of our network without exception. Just remember that if we're gonna access shared resources on Windows servers, it is likely that we must specify the respective exceptions in the Windows firewall, as we saw in another of our videos for the corresponding network segment. We can see here now, we are then able to access resources not only in our main business network, but also in the local network which is where the client is located and we can also access our remote network, in this case, where the OpenVPN server is located. We'll also have internet connectivity and we'll be able to very quickly verify what the parameters are in the virtual adapter. Ok guys, that was all, if you have any questions you can enrich this topic by leaving your comments, which is the reason for our channel to exist. We hope that this video has been of great use to you and for those of you who do not have much experience, it has served as an incentive to explore this world of secure connections that hardware providers are making easier for us to implement. Remember that you support us to continue creating this content by liking our video and subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching and see you next time.